My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies. And at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Sports Card Investor. And this is a special episode because you are looking live at the 2019 National Sports Collectors Convention in Chicago. Of course, you're looking live if you are on YouTube. If you're listening to the podcast, you are hearing this live. You're hearing all the background noise here. But this is exciting. I'm here at the, uh, at the National uh, looking for great sports card investment deals, scouring the National for investment deals. Today's the first day of the National, uh, and the National's off to a great start. I'm excited to tell you about it. Uh, the National started today with a fireside chat with Gary V. Uh, for uh, people with VIP badges, we're allowed to go to that. And many of you know Gary V, uh, Gary uh, Vaynerchuk, has been uh, quite the talk in the hobby the last few months because he is a fairly well-known public figure uh, in the field of entrepreneurship, in the field of marketing. And he has some pretty strong opinions that sports cards are a good investment opportunity. And of course, his opinions align with my opinions because as uh, doing a you know a podcast and YouTube show on sports card investing, you can imagine that I agree with him that uh, sports cards are in fact a really good investment opportunity right now. So he spoke to a crowd of a few hundred people uh, when the show started today and made his points as to why. Um, a lot of the points that he made today are similar points to what he made in an article on his blog a few months ago that, that some of you might have read. He said he really feels like sports cards are going to boom in value in the near future, that a lot of the uh, people who were part of the junk wax era, such as myself, now have kids uh, that are now in the age of wanting to collect sports cards. And uh, the kids are going to kind of bring it back into it. And that is very true. That's exactly what happened with me. And that's also what happened with Gary. He's got a boy that's about my boy's age um, and, and kind of brought both of us back into sports cards over the last couple of years. Um, and, uh, you know, he feels that uh, sneaker flipping, that that culture, that some of those folks are going to move into sports cards. Um, and he feels that as sports gambling uh, spreads further across the nation, that it's going to kind of help get people further into sports cards. Since obviously there's some kind of gambling elements of um, opening up a pack of sports cards and hoping you get a big hit inside. So uh, it was a great talk. A couple of uh, things he said specifically for people who are looking for specific investment tips. Um, he specifically likes uh, Deer and Fox a lot. Uh, so if you're looking to do some basketball investing, he feels De'Aaron Fox is a excellent investment opportunity. That's, that's who he's buying a lot of right now. Um, and he also thinks soccer cards are a good investment opportunity, even though he admits he hasn't gotten into them much himself. Um, and I, I agree with him uh, on that behalf. You know, uh, sports cards are becoming more global. Soccer is obviously an extremely global game. Um, and so why not open yourself up to a global audience if you're investing by investing in soccer? But you obviously have to know the game. And unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of soccer myself, so you're probably not going to hear a lot of soccer talk on this uh, sports investor uh, podcast or YouTube series. Um, but I do think there's opportunity there. Gary agrees that there's opportunity there. Um, and so that was definitely interesting to hear him talk about that. After his talk, I got the opportunity to go visit Gary's booth. Gary is actually um, set up here. Uh, at the National Sports Card Convention, not too far behind me, kind of back over that way. And he's got his own booth where he's selling cards. I bought, I think I was his first customer. I bought a um, John Collins uh, a Prism uh, Silver autograph off of him. And I bought a uh, Mitchell Robinson uh, Prism uh, Green uh, PSA 10 off of him. And, and it got a nice photo with him. Those of you watching on YouTube see that on the screen here. Um, he told me he was uh, very sad to sell the John Collins because he thinks that John Collins makes a great investment as well, which I also agree with because those guys, John Collins and Mitchell Robinson, were on my target list of cards that I was targeting at this show and going after. So it was a fun getting to interact with him. Gary Vee's a great guy. He was very friendly, very talkative, very warm. Uh, it was great to get to interact with him and have that experience uh, and hear what he had to say about sports card investing. So 
After that was over, I've spent a lot of the rest of my day taking care of a little bit of business, uh, submitting some cards to get graded, submitting some cards to uh, get consigned, uh, but then also starting to look around at the deals that are here at this uh, at the at the national. And one of the big questions that I had coming into the national this year was was I really going to be able to find better deals than eBay? Significantly better deals that made it worthwhile for my trip here. And I, I did a little bit of reading about that online and, and, and some people have mixed opinions on that. I, I read some people say, no, the deals aren't that much better than eBay. And I've read other people who say, you know, yeah, you can get really good deals. My experience so far on day one has been that I have definitely been able to find better deals than eBay. Um, I have found some folks who have their cards listed for uh, pretty cheap prices uh, that are below, uh, you know, what things are going for on eBay. I, I happen, I happen to know right off the bat because, um, as you know, if you've watched prior episodes, I have been buying a lot of Lonzo Ball, and I stumbled across a table that had a Lonzo Ball card, a flawless uh, RPA of Lonzo Ball, that I had just bought <laughs> the same card online a couple of weeks ago on eBay, and I felt like I got a fairly good deal of that card on eBay. And the card here was about $100 less than what I paid on eBay. And that's just what the guy's asking price was. So that was a substantially good deal um, and kind of makes me regret that I didn't just hold off on the eBay sale and just come here and try to find that card. Um, other cards I found here, some people have their cards listed for a little above eBay's price. Some people have their cards listed for right around or slightly below eBay's price, but everybody is willing to negotiate. And that's a key. If you come to the national, be ready to negotiate because everybody is willing to negotiate so you can get those prices down. And also, and this is, I think, a particularly important tip that I found true so far, people are willing to negotiate more if you're gonna buy multiple cards from them. So there's a few dealers here that I have earmarked uh, to go back to tomorrow that actually have several cards uh, that I'm looking for uh, of different players. And so my hope is that um, by buying a whole batch at one time, I can get them pretty far significantly down in price, pretty far significantly below what I would be able to find these cards for on eBay. And I think I'm gonna be able to do that. I get the sense that people here are negotiable enough that they wanna move product. You know, These people, in a lot of cases, they came across the country with a whole lot of product in totes and they are eager to move that product and not have to uh, take all that product back with them. So I think that that you know, leads to a lot of opportunity to negotiate and to, uh, and to get some particularly good deals while you're here. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, I've come prepared with I, I, this notebook that you see me holding now. Um, I um, uh, have been carrying this around with me all day, along with actually a rolling suitcase, which as I'm making cards purchases, I'm putting those in my suitcase. Uh, and the suitcase was very helpful as I was bringing cards to the show today to have co uh, to you know for the consignment and that and that type of thing and the grading, um, but the um, uh, the purpose of this notebook is I have two two twofold two purposes. So first of all, I had written in here. Well, we're we're getting getting an announcement. We have got 30 minutes left in today's show. Very exciting. All of the players that I've been targeting. Um, I have been, uh, I wrote down in this book. So for example, here you go, you can see a list of all the different players cards that I'm targeting. So very specific about the players that I'm going after. A lot of, a lot of basketball, a few football players, um, but you know, no surprise, Lonzo Ball, obviously talked about him in prior shows, but players like Mitchell Robinson and Jaron Jackson, uh, and of course, Luca uh, from this last draft class and uh, a little bit of Jason Tatum and Donovan Mitchell and John Collins from the draft class before and a bunch of other folks. And I'll talk why about the reasoning for these guys in particular in future episodes and some of the data that I saw that uh, have me high on these guys. But the important point today is I wrote all of this down, all the cards that I wanted to target, wrote down uh, prices that some of their common cards are going for, like uh, Prism Silvers, for example. So I knew that as I was going to boost and I could instantly pick out if a card was a you know particularly good deal or not right off the bat. Um, and then what I've been doing is as I've been going around the show, I've been, I've been methodically going down the aisles uh, in an orderly manner so I know what booths I'm hitting. And I've been looking at the selection, talking to the vendor, and writing down the prices on certain key cards that I would be interested in buying. So as I'm finding cards that match those on my list, I'm writing the prices down of what they're offering those cards for. 
and I'm going to work my way through the show floor, or at least a good portion of the show floor, before going back and starting to negotiate and make purchases. Because that way I can make sure that I am you know, getting the best deals I can find at the show. Um, I want to make sure I don't, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, find some cards at the first or second booth I see and, and buy those cards. And then, and then the next day, you know, 20 booths down the line, realize I could have gotten those cards for a lot cheaper from a dealer who had them listed for less or was more motivated to sell. You know, with a show this size, when you have this many booths and the scope of this is, is just absolutely incredible, um, you really have power as a buyer. You have power to negotiate, you have power to take your time and to seek out the best possible deal. And that's what I am trying to do. And if you're, if you're trying to buy cards from an investment standpoint, having a whole bunch of sellers in one room at one place, and you as a buyer having money and wanting to you know, invest in various cards, this is an ideal environment for buyers. Um, because you really do have the power and the leverage to seek out the best deals and go and negotiate and try to find find you know the best investments for yourself. Which ultimately, if you're buying cards with the intention of that those cards will someday go up in value and you'll be able to sell those cards, uh, you know you want to you want to obviously seek out the best possible uh, value that you can find because the lower the price you pay in the beginning, the more return you're going to be able to make when you eventually sell those cards down the road. So. A great show so far. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you're seeing some some clips uh, of the of the vastness of the show. It's it's really amazing. Just the not just cards, which of course cards are just everywhere. It's, it's super impressive the depth of cards, but also other types of collectibles, from bats and balls and signed photos and rare you know one of a kind pieces that you would never see anywhere else. Um, the scope is just amazing. So next year, the show's in Atlantic City. If you didn't have a chance to make it out of Chicago this year, hopefully you can make it out to Atlantic City next year. I will do a recap episode next week and let you all know the best deals that I found at the show, the various things that I purchased, and uh, any more lessons that I learned uh, that could be helpful in future years for attending this show. Thanks for watching another episode of Sports Card Investor. I'll see you guys soon.